welcome to the next video in our unit on differential equations. In this video, we'll look at a few techniques for turning differential equations into algebra, plus an integral or two, using Fourier transforms. We'll derive the Fourier transform from looking at Fourier series, then look at some properties of Fourier transforms, as well as the Fourier transforms of some common functions. Then we'll look at taking the Fourier transform of the derivative and use it to reduce some differential equations in real space into algebraic equations in Fourier space. Lastly, we'll show that solutions to inhomogeneous boundary value problems are actually convolutions of Fourier transforms of functions. In this unit, we've spent a lot of time thinking about expanding functions in terms of sets of orthogonal functions. For example, consider the complex function f is a map from the interval minus l to l to the complex numbers. We can expand f in a Fourier series. f of x is the sum from n equals minus infinity to infinity of cn times e to the i n pi x over l, where cn equals 1 over 2l times the integral from minus l to l of e to the i n pi y over l dy. Basically, this takes waves in the domain minus L to L and assigns a weight Cn to each of them. For these waves, we're allowed to have wave numbers Kn equals n pi over L. What happens in the limit as L goes to infinity? For one thing, the wave numbers get closer and closer together until they can take any value along the real line. The spacing between the wave numbers is given by delta K equals pi over L. Formally, we can write this as f of x equals the sum from minus infinity to infinity of the integral from minus l to l of f of y times e to the minus i k n x y dy times e to the i k n x times delta k over 2 pi. Note we have used the identity 1 over 2 l equals pi over l times 1 over 2 pi equals delta k over 2 pi. In the limit that L goes to infinity, delta K goes to zero, so this becomes a Riemann sum for an integral over R. F of X equals one over two pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of F hat of K times E to the I K X DK, where F hat of K equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of F of X times E to the minus I K X DX. F hat of K is the Fourier transform of F of X, and F of X is the inverse for Fourier transform of f hat of k. There are many different conventions for the Fourier transform, so whichever one you pick, please be consistent. A particularly common one uses 1 over root 2 pi as a prefactor for both integrals in order to make them more symmetric. We can define the Fourier transform and its inverse as linear operators. f of f of x equals f hat of k and f inverse of f hat of k equals f of x. Both of these operators are linear. f of f of x plus g of x equals f of f of x plus f of g of x, which equals f hat of k plus g hat of k. And f of a times f of x equals a times f of f of x equals a times f hat of k. Next, we'll explore the Fourier integral theorem and learn why we can invert Fourier transforms. This theorem says that if we know all the frequency and phase information about a function, then we can reconstruct the original function in real space. This is the basis for fields like scattering and crystallography. In fact, this is the basis behind how Rosalind Franklin and Raymond Gosling were able to deduce the structure of DNA from their scattering experiments. We'll return to these ideas in the next video. The Fourier integral theorem states, f of x equals one on two pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of y e to the minus i k y dy times e to the i k x dk. This equals one on two pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of y e to the i k x minus y dy dk. We can think of this formally in terms of a flip or mirror operator m, which takes f of x to f of minus x. This is a linear operator. f inverse of f equals one over two pi times mf of f equals one over two pi times fm of f. This means that f inverse of f of x equals one on two pi times f of f of minus x. And from the definition of both integrals, this is equivalent to f inverse f of f of x equals f of x. Let's look at some properties of the Fourier transform through Fourier transforms of some common functions. We'll start with the delta function. 
The Fourier transform of the delta function is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of delta of x times e to the minus i k x dx, which equals e to the minus i k times zero, which equals one. So the Fourier transform of the delta function is a constant function. From the Fourier integral theorem, we can show that the Fourier transform of a constant function is then a delta function. What about the complex exponential e to the i a x? The Fourier transform of the complex exponential is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the i a x times e to the minus i k x dx, which equals delta of k minus a. This acts as a phase shift. From this, we can show the Fourier transform of f times e to the i a x equals f hat of k minus a. and the Fourier transform of f of x minus a equals e to the minus i k a f hat of k. The Fourier transform of a rescaled function f of a times x is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of a times x times e to the minus i k x dx, which we can solve by the change of variables x tilde equals a x. So 1 over a times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x tilde times e to the minus i k x tilde over a dx tilde equals 1 over the absolute value of a times the Fourier transform of f of k over a. This means that shrinking a measurement in real space corresponds to increasing it in Fourier space, and vice versa. In practice, there are tables of Fourier transforms for the most common functions. So far, I chose a few that illustrate some important properties of the Fourier transform, rather than an exercise in integration. Here are a few that I won't derive, but you might find useful. The Fourier transform of the heaviside step function is minus i over k plus pi times delta k. The Fourier transform of a square pulse of width 2a given by h of x plus a minus h of x minus a equals 2 sine k k a over k. The Fourier transform of a decaying pulse centered at the origin given by e to the minus a times the absolute value of x is 2a over k squared plus a squared. And lastly, the Fourier transform of a Gaussian e to the minus a x squared is a Gaussian root pi over a times e to the minus a k squared on 4. Beyond being able to reconstruct any real space function from the frequency and phase information, the real power of Fourier transforms lies in using them to solve boundary value problems. Before we get there, let's have a look at Fourier transforms of derivatives. Imagine we have a function, f of x equals 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f hat of k e to the i k x dk. We can differentiate it with respect to x. f prime of x equals i k over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f hat of k times e to the i k x dk, which equals i k over 2 pi times f of x. From the Fourier integral theorem, we can show that the Fourier transform of f prime of x is i k times f hat of k. Applying it again, f of x times f of x equals i f hat prime of k. A corollary of this is that the Fourier transform of the nth derivative of f equals i k to the n f hat of k. Now that we understand the behavior of derivatives under the Fourier transform, we can use them to turn solving some differential equations into algebra. This is particularly useful for boundary value problems where the domain is the entire real line, where the solutions decay to zero as x goes to plus or minus infinity. One example we have seen before is resonance of a damped driven harmonic oscillator. x double prime of t plus 2 beta x prime of t plus omega naught squared x of t equals f of x, where x x of t is the position of the oscillator at time t, beta is the damping coefficient, omega naught equals root k over m is the natural frequency of the oscillator, and f of t is the driving function. We've already studied this in terms of sturm liouville theory, but here we'll look at some different properties of this system by solving it with a Fourier transform. Before we start, one quick note on terminology. We used conjugate variables x and k when thinking about Fourier transforms of space being equivalent to 1 over the period of the wave. Instead of space, our problem is time dependent. We often pair the conjugate variable t and omega, where the Fourier transforms look at things in frequency space. 
The Fourier transform of the damped driven harmonic oscillator is minus omega squared x hat of omega plus i omega beta x hat of omega plus omega naught squared times x hat of omega equals f hat of omega. Then in frequency space, x hat of omega equals f hat of omega over omega naught squared minus omega squared plus i beta omega. Since this is a complex quantity, we can write it as a real amplitude times a complex phase. Thus, x hat of omega times x hat of omega tilde equals f hat squared over omega naught squared minus omega squared squared minus 4 beta squared omega squared. This function has a maximum at omega star squared equals omega naught squared minus 2 beta squared. What the Fourier transform is telling us is how different frequencies respond to the differential equation. We see that there is a markedly increased response at the resonant frequency omega star. Next, let's consider the 1D equation minus u double prime plus lambda squared u equals f of x. We can take the Fourier transform of the whole equation, k squared u hat of k plus lambda squared u hat of k equals f hat of k. We just need to use algebra to solve for u hat of k equals f hat of k over k squared plus lambda squared. Then the solution to the original equation is u of x is the inverse Fourier transform of u hat of x, which equals 1 on 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f hat of k divided by k squared plus lambda squared times e to the i kx dk. Consider the special case where f of x equals delta of x minus s. The Fourier transform of this delta function is just the shift e to the minus i k s. This gives the Green's function solution to our equation. g hat of k and s equals e to the minus i k s over k squared plus lambda squared. We can take the inverse Fourier transform of this and find that the real space Green's function is g of x and s equals 1 over 2 lambda times e to the minus lambda times the absolute value of x minus s. Then the particular solution to our equation is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the Green's function of x and s times f of s ds equals 1 on 2 lambda times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus lambda times the absolute value of x minus s f of s ds. This type of integral comes up all the time in different contexts, so much so that it has even been given its own name. The convolution of a pair of scalar functions f of x and g of x is given by h of x equals f star g of x equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x minus s times g of s ds. The convolution has many nice properties, including commutivity, f star g equals g star f, associativity, f star g star h equals f star g star h, linearity, f star a g plus b h equals a times f star g plus b times f star h, the zero function f star zero equals zero, and the identity function f star delta equals f. It's worth keeping a few things in mind to avoid getting confused. The notation for convolutions is a little strange. f star g of x minus s equals f of x star g of x minus s, while f of x minus s star g of x minus s actually equals f star g of x minus 2s. The constant function 1 isn't the identity, since f star 1 equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of s d s. The delta function acts as the identity. Convolutions act like integrals that smear one distribution out over another. Here is a convolution of a square pulse with another square pulse. The convolution is integrating the overlap between the two functions. The Fourier transform of a convolution of two functions f and g is a product of their Fourier transforms. The Fourier transform of their convolution is given by the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f hat of k minus s times g hat of s ds, which equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f hat of x minus s times g hat of s times e to the minus i k x dx ds. We'll use the use of substitution y equals x minus s to show that this equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f hat of y times g hat of s times e to the minus i k y plus s dy ds. 
then we can split this into a product of two integrals. The integral from minus infinity to infinity of f hat of y e to the minus i k y dy times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of g hat of s e to the minus i k s ds, which equals f hat of k times g hat of k. We can use this fact to solve inhomogeneous boundary value problems. The techniques we have discussed so far extend seamlessly to higher dimensions. For example, if we have a function in n-dimensional space, we simply treat the Fourier space as an n-dimensional Euclidean space. The Fourier transform of the gradient of a scalar function, f of the gradient of u of x, equals i k x1 u hat of k times the unit vector k x1, plus i k x2 u hat of k times the unit vector k x2, etc., through i kxn u hat of k times the unit vector kn. Likewise, the Fourier transform of the Laplacian is minus k squared u hat of k. Then we can use vector algebra to solve the equation for u hat. Consider the wave equation, dt squared u equals c squared dx squared u. In this example, we'll only be doing a Fourier transform in terms of the spatial coordinate x and leaving the time component t as is. dt squared u of t and k equals minus c squared k squared u hat of t and k. This is a harmonic equation with solution u hat of t and k equals a hat of k e to the i k c t, plus b hat of k e to the minus i k c t. Notice that the constants of integration are actually functions of k. We can invert this solution. u of t and x equals 1 on 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity a hat of k e to the i k c t plus b hat of k e to the minus i k c t times e to the i k x d k. Both of the terms in the integral act like shifts. So this equals a of x minus c t plus b of x plus c t. The two arbitrary functions for the traveling wave are twice differentiable functions that must be determined by the bound and initial conditions. For example, if u of t and 0 equals u of t and 1 equals 0, and u of 0 and x equals sine 3 pi x, then our solutions look like u of t and x equals 1 half sine 3 pi x minus ct plus sine 3 pi x plus ct. Lastly, let's consider an electron trapped in a 2D infinite square well potential of dimensions 2L by 2L. Its behavior is given by the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, minus h bar squared over 2m times the Laplacian of psi of t and r equals i h bar dt of psi of t and r. We'll take the Fourier transform with respect to both spatial directions. h bar squared k squared over 2m times psi hat of t and k equals i i h bar dt of psi hat of t and k, which we can directly integrate such that psi hat of t and k equals psi hat of 0 and k times e to the minus i h bar squared k squared over 2m times t. Then psi of t and x equals 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of psi hat of 0 and k e to the minus i h bar squared k squared over 2m times t times e to the i k x dk. This tells us that the energy levels e equals h bar omega are given by h bar squared k squared over 2m, which equals h bar squared times kx squared plus ky squared over 2m. So we've just used used algebra to solve this quantum mechanics problem rather than solving the Schrodinger equation explicitly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.